Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Penetration Testing Bootcamp. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at how to download uh, and install uh, the Nessus Vulnerability Scanner. And the system we're going to be installing it on is Kali Linux. Now, it's very important to note that Nessus is a proprietary piece of software. And so before you begin, you might want to consider your options. Uh, if you're not comfortable with proprietary software, then you can, uh, again, utilize something like OpenVAS. However, in this case, uh, we're going to be taking a look at how to install it nonetheless. Another thing that you need to take into consideration is Nessus doesn't have a package, uh, or rather Kali Linux doesn't have a, the Nessus package within its repository, so you need to download the Debian file manually. Uh, that can be done by performing a Google search. Uh, and You know, I've just sent, uh, essentially entered Nessus here and then clicking on the first link there and uh, just give that a few seconds to load up. So there we are, it's going to give you their various uh, solutions based on the number of IPs uh, that you can scan. In this case, we're going to be using the Essentials uh, package here. As you can see, it's a free download. We can scan up to 16 IPs, high-speed in-depth assessments, uh, provides you with free training. If you want to go ahead and purchase the training, uh, if you require it, then you can go ahead and do that. It's a great training program that I actually went through once. Uh, but again, it's very useful if you intend on using Nessus uh, within an enterprise environment. So uh, again, this is ideal for educators, students, and individuals uh, starting their careers in cybersecurity. So you just click on download here, and you then need to register for an activation code. So uh, I have already done that. And uh, again, in my case, I really don't need to enter that again, but you know, I'll just do that uh, uh, right now. And uh, once you are able to register, uh, they will send you with an activation or they'll actually send you an activation code that will be required to register your Nessus installation. So I'm just going to fill in my information. All right. Uh, once you've filled in your information, uh, it's going to tell you that uh, your registration is complete and they will send you a an activation code that you will require. So check out your inbox for that. Uh, now that that is done, we can actually download Nessus. So we're going to click on download here. Uh, give that a few seconds and it's going to take you to the downloads page. Now, uh, when it comes down to your Nessus uh, infrastructure and how you want to go about uh, setting up your uh, the systems that you want to scan and the scanner itself, in this case, as I said, we're going to be installing Nessus on Kali. Uh, we can start off with Nessus. So you want to make sure you're on the Nessus uh, page here. And then you can download the latest version of Nessus, which in this case is 8.15.2. And you can download uh, that. Uh, you can download the appropriate version based on on your operating system, and uh, more specifically, the distribution version. Now uh, you can see that there's various uh, versions here for various distributions, and that's very important. In our case, we're we're running Kali, so we're looking for Debian nine, and uh, you can see that this works on Kali Linux uh, 2017 all the way to 2020. And in my case, I have tested it out on uh, Kali Linux 2021, and it works just fine. Um, so you want to click on the Debian file here. There we are. And just hit agree. I've already done that and downloaded the Debian file. So I'll head over into my terminal. And uh, now, as you can see, I'm currently within my downloads folder. And to install this, we'll use the Debian package management utility. So we'll say uh, sudo dpkg. And then we use the I option to install the Debian package. And then I just type in Nessus and provide the entire package name there. And uh, you can see it's going to begin installing Nessus. And in my case, you can see it says uh, you can start up Nessus uh, by interacting with uh, System D or System Control. And you can start the service by saying System Control start Nessus D dot service or the Nessus daemon service, right? So that can be done again by saying sudo system ctl and then start Nessus D dot service. We hit enter and that should be started. You can then check the status of Nessus here. By typing in status, you can see it's loaded and active. So that is working out just fine. You can now access the web interface by navigating to your local host on port 8834. Uh, Nessus requires uh, or actually has um, an SSL certificate. Uh, however, I, I'll be covering the process of setting up your own certificate if you want to do that. In this case, we'll just uh, access a local host. So 127.0.0.1. And of course, we want to use HTTPS. And uh, again, let me just confirm the port here. That is port 
uh, 8834. So we'll just type that in here. So 8834, we hit enter. It's going to tell you to uh, that, you know, that this particular certificate issuer is uh, not signed or is not valid. So we're just going to hit advanced and hit accept. Uh, these are the options for Firefox. Um, so this is the Nessus installation page here. This is the web interface. And uh, during your initial setup, you'll need to go through this. In our case, we're using Nessus Essentials. However, if, you're, if you have actually purchased a license, then you can use any of the other uh, options here. In our case, we're using Nessus uh, Essentials, which is free. So we hit continue. I'm going to skip getting an activation code as we already have obtained one. So I'm just going to head over into my inbox uh, and uh, I'm just going to copy over the activation code and then uh, I'll continue from there. All right, so I've pasted in my activation code and I'm just going to hit continue. It's going to ask you to specify a, uh, a user account for the administrator user. And this is a Nessus uh, user account. So whenever you will want to log into Nessus, this is the username and password that you're going to use. In my case, I'm just going to use uh, the pre-filled or the saved credentials that I used for my previous uh, Nessus installation. I'm going to hit submit. And uh, that is going to begin installing, uh, downloading uh, the required plugins and then compiling the plugins. In my case, uh, I, as you can see, it's, there we are, it's going to begin uh, downloading the plugins. This is going to take a while, uh, depending on your, in the, uh, the, your actual internet connection and the speed of your internet connection. And of course, once it begins compiling the plugins, uh, that again is going to depend on uh, you know, your system resources. So I'm just going to let this complete. All right, so once it's completed downloading the plugins, as I said, it's going to uh, move on to compiling the plugins. Again, this is going to take a certain uh, amount of time based on your system resources. So I'm just going to, again, uh, let that complete. All right, uh, once the plugins have been compiled, you'll be greeted with the following welcome screen. As you can see, welcome to Nessus Essentials. It'll essentially allow you to immediately launch a scan to identify what hosts are on your network and available to scan, right? So you can provide the IPs, etc., and any other website uh, or uh, you know domain. In this case, we're just going to skip over that because that's what I'm going to be taking you through anyway. Uh, we don't want to take a look at the offer right now, but there you are. That's the interface, the Nessus interface. As you can see uh, on your left, you have a sidebar that can also be um, that uh, again allows you to actually uh, navigate through your scans, uh, take a look at your policies, etc. And you can also collapse it like so, which is uh, very convenient. And uh, you also have your settings here. So if I click on settings, it'll give you give you an overview of um, how many uh, hosts you've added as you um, as you might have already remembered, uh, we require or this particular version of Nessus uh, is restricted to 16 IPs. So you need to keep that in mind. You can check for software updates here. You can update all components uh, or update the plugins themselves or display, uh, disable that. However, I don't recommend doing that. Uh, and then, of course, you have your password here where you can change the password that you set earlier during the setup process. And on your left, you have advanced settings, which I'll just go through briefly and we'll be getting, we'll actually be going through if we need to. Uh, but um, these essentially allow you to uh, modify, firstly, the user interface and then, secondly, your scan options. Um, so, for example, if we take a, a look at a settings like the default port range, uh, you can set that to default or specify your own TCP port range. So maybe uh, port 1 to 65,535 if you wanted to scan all ports. So it's uh, fairly simple to customize this. Um, you can also change um, other important options like, uh, for example, um, let's see uh, if I can find that here. Um, uh, let's see the timeout options if I can actually find it. There we are the engine idle uh, wait uh, time or period. So uh, that can be customized based on whether or not you have a firewall or any uh, type of um, uh, device that is actually proxying or filtering traffic that may cause delays in some cases. You can also take a look at your logging options so you can log details. You can change the value for that, of course. Uh, you can also uh, change where the log file is stored. So in this case, the default location will be under the OPT directory under Nessus, uh, Nessus, and then logs, and then Nessus D messages, right? So um, you can customize that. As for performance, this is where you can now play around with the performance options, either to uh, speed up or slow down uh, the scan speeds. 
Um, so for example, the maximum amount of hosts that can be modified, as you can see, that's the concurrent amount of hosts per scan. Uh, the maximum engine threads that again can be changed if you're having uh, or if you're actually maxing out your system resources so regardless of your 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 current uh, host configuration you can actually modify that to actually fit within your system resources parameters or the parameters that you actually want to uh, provide right so uh, you can modify that uh, as for security uh, again this is really not important in this case and we'll get to that uh, in the next couple of videos as for the miscellaneous settings, you can see that these uh, primarily deal with uh, the automatic update delay, which is in this case uh, set to 24. Uh, these are the number of hours to wait between updates. You can change that based on your environment and your requirements. You can disable auto updates, or, although uh, you know that really isn't something I would recommend doing. And uh, let's see, these uh, source IPs, you can actually provide, you can see right over here, source IPs to use when scanning a, on a multi-homed host. So if multiple IPs are used, Nessus will cycle through them. And of course, uh, that is applicable in some instances. Uh, it's another important setting that I wanted to highlight here. Uh, as for the scanner health option, this is very important because this will give you an overview of your resource consumption or you know the actual resources that are being consumed by Nessus. In this case, you can see that uh, Nessus is, is consuming about 158 megabytes of RAM. The CPU load is set to zero because I haven't launched a scan and the number of hosts being scanned is zero as well. As you can see, it gives me a warning here. Minimum memory requirements not met. In this case, it requires uh, four gigabytes of uh, RAM uh, as a minimum. In my case, I have four gigs, but uh, it's uh, limited to three point something because I have or allocated a partition uh, or rather I, I actually allocated it incorrectly or rather not precisely uh, because I'm on a virtual machine. Um, it gives you graphs here as for your performance and then of course your network uh, performance and the actual bandwidth that's being utilized. So for example, network connections, network traffic, uh, the amount of DNS lookups, so on and so forth. And then of course you have your alerts, which will tell you whether something is wrong in regards to your re system resource consumption, right? So that's very, very important. Um, going back to the scans, you can initiate a new scan here or you can create a new folder that will help you categorize your scans. Uh, if you take a look at your policies, this is where you can create custom uh, templates uh, that will actually define uh, what actions will be performed uh, during a scan. And I'll get to that uh, when we actually get there. And then, of course, you have your plugin rules here, which again, as you can see, it says right over here, plugin rules allow you to hide or change the severity of any given plugin. And uh, taking a look at the profile options, you can modify information pertaining to your accounts or your account rather you can provide your email change the password and also generate an api key uh, that can be used uh, in various ways however that's beyond the scope of this particular series all right so that is how to install and configure nessus uh, in the next videos we'll actually get started with the process of uh, you know start setting up our first scan uh, taking a look at uh, what results we're able to obtain and then of course we'll move on from there uh, that being said, that's going to be it for this video, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. A huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated, and this is a formal thank you. So thank you, Shamir Douglas, Ryan Carr, Sandor, Michael Busby, Sid Saab, Doozy, Dafim Bari, Dustin Umpress, and Michael Hubbard. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you keep us making even more high-quality content for you guys. So thank you.